technology, the truth. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to Chronic Gamer. My name is Matt, and this is my final thoughts and redirect for episodes 130, 131, and 132 of Inuyasha. So go ahead, click the link in the description, check that out, come back here, let me know what you think in the comments section. If you're watching this on YouTube and you want to see the next two weeks' worth of reaction videos, check out my Patreon. The link is also in the description. And over there, I post early access reactions to all the videos I post here on YouTube, with the exception of video games and My Hero Academia. Okay, so, um, we're back to the self-contained arcs, um, it's okay, these are these episodes were pretty good, but I wish that we had more substantial arcs like we got last time with the Band of Seven, but, um, you know, it is what it is. We're coming up to the movie soon, too, the third movie, and I'm really excited for that because, um, since I heard about these Inuyasha movies, everyone's been telling me that the third one is their favorite, so... Uh, definitely really excited to see that, but, um, anyways, uh, the first episode we got was with Shippo, he, uh, met some more fox demons, and they looked up to him, they, I guess they might have heard of him, because, uh, they heard of his moveset and all of that, and, uh, or I should say they heard of Inuyasha's moveset, and they just associated it with Shippo, because he's trapping with them, and he's also a fox demon, but, um, they wanted him to teach them how to fight and all that, and Shippo was trying to be a hotshot and, and basically show off to them, and it, he made this girl that he was, you know, crushing on feel really bad, so uh, I think Shippo messed up a little bit with that, but, you know, I guess lesson learned, but, um, you know, Shippo is a badass, but he was he was definitely playing it up a little bit to the point where uh, they thought that he was basically responsible for all of the fights that had been going on the wind scar all that but uh he did develop a new move the heart scar and it seems to just be biting so um i don't know if that's going to be an actual move or if that's just a move for that episode but you know it was a cute little shippo episode i'm not complaining about it but uh definitely not my favorite shippo episode there there are other better shippo episodes but um uh, the arc that we got, the little mini arc that we got after that was pretty cool. The salamander demon that was trapped inside the wall hanging. Uh, so apparently it, need, it needed flesh because they skinned the people who sealed it to begin with, skinned the body. So it needed flesh to fully regain its uh, full form. For whatever reason, though, it said that it only needed uh, uh, male flesh, so I'm not sure why, but um, yeah, I, I guess it, it needed men. And it was possessing the women by having them swallow the eggs and, uh, and um, you know, work for them, I guess. Once they, once they swallowed the eggs, they, they were working for the demon, the, the salamander demon, and there's really nothing you can do except for using the sutra and killing the salamander that's inside of them. Uh, Moroku was actually able to figure that out, which was pretty cool. Uh, Moroku really came in handy this time around. I don't know how we would have fared against all of these women if Moroku hadn't figured out to uh, use the sutra on them and uh, destroy the, the, the demon salamanders that are inside of them. Um, if he hadn't figured that out, they would have probably still be punching away trying to find out why these women are coming, uh, uh, seemingly all trying to attack them at once. But once they uh, were able to do that, it uh, all they had to do was fight Sango and make her snap out of it, and then everyone would be everyone would be back to normal, I guess. Um, they were able to kill the Salamander Demon pretty easily. I mean, Inuyasha just used the Wind Scar once, and that was a wrap. Um, but this was not really about the salamander demon so much as it was about uh, Moroku and Sango again. Uh, they had the same type of connection and that they had shown in the Band of Seven, where they, where Moroku obviously is outwardly showing his feelings and his care for her, calling out for her when he was in trouble, uh, saving her life, and then even that speech at the end, which I totally wasn't expecting with him telling her basically how she is um, 
different from all of the other women that he's met and how he loves her in a different way and he wants her to move in with him and, and have his children when um, all of this is said and done, when they defeat Naraku and all that. And he actually did it in a way that was not lecherous. It was somewhat romantic. And uh, unfortunately, the moment was ruined immediately after when Sango asked if she would, if he would still uh, hit on other women. I guess that's just going to be a part of him. Even if they're married and he's faithful to her, he probably will still hit on other women. But... Um, you know, I, I wasn't expecting that, and it's nice to see that their feelings are all out on the table now, because she did say yes, so that's a win, if you ask me. But uh, yeah, these these were cool episodes. Um, not really much more I can say other than that, because like I said, they're little self-contained episodes, but uh, if there's anything else you want to discuss, let me know in the comment section. And if you haven't already, like and subscribe. Until next time, I'm Chronic Gamer. Peace.